We're recording here. And so before we start, let me show you a couple of pictures of, of a colleague of mine uh, that show something very similar to what you did in the laboratory. Uh, so by now, all of you did the lab in which you were doing uh, breakouts and uh, tensor fractures. Uh, did you get to see the breakouts? Yeah. Wh which ones? Uh, was, were those Berea? Yeah. Berea Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, that sometimes can happen. So, uh, opposite to what you did, uh, this, this friend of mine, he did experiments uh, inside a triaxial cell. And that, similar to what you did before with the samples of rock, well, he had holes, but also he put all of that uh, under confining stress. And here you can see very nicely uh, breakouts, right? So if your sample uh, shattered and you couldn't see breakouts, uh, here you can see very nicely how those breakouts happen. Uh, let me ask you, in which direction was the load applied in this experiment, the maximum stress? In this direction, right? And I know this, like this case, that case, that case, you see very nicely here how that shear fracture expands a little bit towards the sides. But something very interesting from, from these images that we'll get back to this later on is to see what is the influence of the heterogeneity of rock and anis anisotropy of rock. For example, these were wellbores, and, and that's when we get also into deviated wellbores and, and why this is important. Look at the difference between this one for the load perpendicular to bedding and this one with the load parallel to bedding. Notice how the breakout now, it, it's a little bit different than before because the properties of the rock are not the same in the same direction. Here you can see another case where you see a fracture that propagates much further it goes kind of following the lamination of the rock and probably you can get a breakout in this location and furthermore when you have a deviated wellbore and the orientation of the wellbore is not in the direction of the of the rock uh, strength or one of the what we call the principal axis of the rock that will be in this direction or in that direction now you can see that the wellbores may appear at some angle that is not the exact angle at which you expected it. In this case, the load uh, was applied in this direction, but notice that breakouts are kind of at an angle. And that's because of the orientation of the properties of the rock. And probably you can see here a small fracture that happens there, but uh, this example is very nice. There you can see how you have the breakout right there, but also you see those fractures extending further away exactly at the angle of the lamination of the rock. Um, and when you get to deviated wellbores, you need to consider uh, this type of uh, anisotropy of the rock. So we'll, we'll get back to this later on, but I just wanted to, to show you that experience that you did uh, are are quite important. There are actually some other people uh, doing these kind of experiments for uh, more complex conditions and more complex uh, properties of rocks. Okay, so let me see. There is uh, we have to finish with one example and then we'll go to the homework. And that example is the one for deviated wellbores. And we'll find it right here. Uh, in this example, we were trying to analyze what is the location of breakouts and tensile fractures according to the orientation of the wellbore. For the vertical wellbore, uh, we know that uh, pretty well. And the new thing was to analyze that for deviated wellbores. And I think everyone got very clearly why you would have breakouts here on the sides and the and the tensile fractures on the top and bottom 
but but there was something else that was not very uh, clear uh, that's what I understand from the questions that the people made after that and it was that case uh, what happens when the wellbore has an orientation such that near the wellbore the minimum principal stress is not the one the same as in the far field and when that happens we have this rotation of a hydraulic fracture so let me let me let's see if, if this works uh, this example what I mean is this is the wellbore okay what I mean is that the hydraulic fracture or a tensile fracture because this is close to the wellbore it will be a plane like this one here and there because the minimum principal stress just near the wellbore it is in this direction but just because it's near the wellbore because we know that the wellbore modifies stresses around the wellbore however as you go further away from the wellbore and that's something that Kirsch equations uh, allows us to calculate you get uh, about three radii away four radii away from the wellbore and the minimum principal stress is not going to be this one in this direction but it's going to be that one on the on that direction and when you get to the far field is when this fracture is going to go to from being a plane like this and it's going to turn into something which is like that as you would normally expect uh, in this condition and so the last thing that we said was that this is not good because it adds what is called tortuosity to the fracture imagine if you are flowing uh, propans through that uh, they are not going to uh, flow very easily and they are going to get screened at that point and probably that fracture although maybe full of fluid it may not have any propan in it so in order to avoid that uh, what you do is you do a perforation in the wellbore and a perforation in the wellbore is going to be very similar to just let me just add perforations which are the same in all locations <coughs> it's like a small wellbore so you have a big wellbore and then the perforation is going to be a small wellbore and notice that if we have a perforation for example a vertical perforation that's going to be similar to case number one which is a vertical wellbore if we have a perforation in horizontal direction that's going to be very similar to case number two and in those two cases we see that natural fractures the orientation of the minimum principal stress is going to be the same as the one in the far field so in this case when you have perforations your fractures are going to propagate when they grow out of the perforations as planes without the tortuosity that we saw before and sometimes you know these perforations we're going to talk about this but they are done at an angle and usually they do not overlap in the same place but in that case the most favorable one will help this hydraulic fracture to happen and extend without that tortuosity we'll get back to that later on but it's, it's very important that that from this part you know what is the role of the orientation of the wellbore on the local stresses around the wellbore okay um, there's one, one more thing that you have to do here in order to solve the, the homework and uh, uh, we're going to talk about that and then we'll talk about the homework and that's about what happens when you have a wellbore which is not vertical or horizontal but it's at a given deviation uh, like for example somewhere over there right when you go from the vertical into the lateral or when you have a step off somewhere over here your wellbore is going to be deviated and in order to to quantify that deviation uh, we're going to define two angles that tell you what is the orientation of the wellbore at a particular point and those are going to be uh, we're going to use again 
the stereo nets and the lower hemisphere projection uh, remember I'm going to try to do it in three dimensions for stereo nets we plot geometrical elements and project those on a half sphere where this is the north this is the east west and south and that half sphere looks like a cup something like that and at any location in the wellbore uh, we can define like for example say right here I'm gonna take this segment of the wellbore just that segment okay it's not the entire wellbore it's just that segment over there and I'm going to put it in here and let's say it goes from there and it hits the the bottom of the half sphere over there well that line is going to be a unique line and let me try to make this so that it's easy to understand if you project this line on the horizontal plane this angle is going to be the azimuth of that deviation and it's going to go by Greek letter delta and the angle from the vertical to the actual line is going to be the deviation of the wellbore and it will go by late letter Greek letter phi <coughs> so for example a vertical wellbore is going to have a deviation of zero and a horizontal wellbore we have a deviation of 90 and depending on what the orientation of the wellbore is uh, that's going to be the value of the azimuth for example what would be the value of the azimuth for this lateral over here what would be the angle? You have to tell me an angle now. That would be 90 degrees, right? And, and let's go ahead and, and because although we use a 3D plot in order to understand what, what we are trying to mean, uh, but we prefer the 2D plot. Let me go ahead and do that 2D plot over here. So again, this is going to be the north, east, west south and similar to the faults we're going to have 30 degrees and 60 degrees so it's going to be 30 degrees 60 degrees of the deviation 90 degrees all right so what i want you to tell me is now in this plot in this stereo net where is the vertical well in the middle. right there in the middle right that's number one where is number two right here number two and number three would be right there going towards the east so you could recognize in this plot what is the deviation of the of the wellbore and if you have the deviation survey you can actually plot what is the exact path of the wellbore but remember that each of these points it doesn't show the final position of the wellbore it's not an average angle of the final position of, of the well but it's the current deviation of the wellbore so for example if we were to plot the deviation survey going from one to three and are all these points over here until it, go, it goes to three we will see those crosses 
there and as it goes into a deviated wall board uh, let me use let's make here and star it will go like this like that and probably at 45 there we have the star and it continues like that so all these crosses they show what is the deviation in uh, in this stereo net plot why do we do this uh, we do this because for a vertical wellbore we were able to plot just one value of the lower bound and upper bound at a given depth because this is just one orientation for a deviated wellbore uh, we're going to see we're not going to calculate the values but I expect that you know how to read those plots we're going to plot we're going to do here a surface plot of, for example, uh, PV or a surface plot of a given breakout angle for a given uh, mud pressure. And by looking at this surface plot, uh, we're going to see uh, in which directions you need more or less mud weight in order to have a stable wellbore but for now you know this is uh, everything I, I want you to to know for in order to solve the homework uh, to identify deviated wellbores in a stereo net uh, projection okay uh, and we'll talk about the deviated wellbores uh, next week how actually you do the wellbore stability analysis on those all right so any questions about this? No? Well, then let's, let's talk to the, about the homework. What about the homework you today? Uh, are you guys done with that? Part two, so how can I help you? What, what's, what's there in part two that, yeah. All you need is just the pressure PV, PW, O, and P here, right? And then the corresponding modulus to that. Uh, let's see. I'm asking you for PWBO for a wellbore breakout angle of 70 degrees and I'm asking you PW shear and PB. Okay, what you have to do here and what I'm asking you, let's see if I find that in my notes. This problem 692. Uh, I, I have a recommendation here for you. Solve the first one probably just manually with your calculator, <coughs> but in many in this homework, uh, you may find it a little bit long if you do it entirely with your calculator. I would rather do it with Excel. Okay? Just code your equations in there and just change one value and uh, and just get the answer but try to do it at least one time on paper what i want you to get from this homework is that you calculate those points but actually in 692 i'm asking you to calculate different lambda p's which means different value different values of pore pressure and what you are going to C is that if this is lambda P and this is PW and as the overpressure increases your PW BO is going to increase let me zoom there and as your lambda p or pore pressure increases it's basically pore pressure right your pb is going to decrease so there is going to be a point at which uh, i don't remember exactly the results but probably these lines meet or not i don't remember but the concept here is to understand that 
the higher the pore pressure, the smaller the mud window. And probably there's going to be a point at which for these conditions you cannot drill a well bore. It's, it's not stable. And that's because the pore pressure is, is too high. If the pore pressure is too high, uh, the strength of the rock, as we know, is going to be lower and uh, that well bore may not be stable. That rock may not be strong enough to, to bear that well bore. Yeah. Yeah. So for our graph, the zero angle when theta was equal to zero, the graphs look weird. So when they don't converge as nicely as you showed us in class, one one went like that, the other one. Okay, that's that that's going to be the case for the radial stress. I don't think it's going to be the case for the hoop stress. And it's the case of for the radial stress because sometimes let me find six nine one okay six nine one over here uh, let me see if I get this right if you have a stress in this direction the maximum and the minimum in this one uh, your radial stress here at the wall of the wellboard has to be zero so probably at some point uh, or it may be for the other one uh, but at some point, because this value has to be zero and further away is not going to be zero, it's going to go through a hump and then to the far field value. But the important thing is that you see that at the wall of the wellboard is zero and at the far field value far away from the wellboard is what you should expect far away. But it, it, it might happen because you may have a component of stress in another direction, which is uh, adding stress a little bit further away. So don't don't uh, don't think that, that that's that's wrong. It might be it might be correct. Okay. Yeah. The stress starts at zero at R equals zero. For this particular case, for PW. 3200s because the pore pressure is 3200s. Otherwise, sigma RR is going to start at 800s. Right? So you, you should be able also to, to see that. For the first case, it's going to be zero. For the second case, it's going to be 800. Yeah. Okay, so are we good to continue to the next homework? Remember the next homework, I think it's due on, on Tuesday. I'm gonna check on the, on the web, but our exam is on, is on Friday, right? Just next week. And so the, the homework is due on Tuesday, yes? Um, is our exam in class again? Yes, yes, 1 p.m. here, yeah. Good question. It's just going to be what we saw about faults and well stability. That's it, okay? So, and I think that involves homeworks, uh, I don't know, from five to seven, something like that, or uh, five to eight. Uh, but it's just about faults and, and, and well stability. But remember that still you need to know how to calculate stresses at depth, all right? So that's something that, that you should know from before. Uh, you, should, you have to know what is lambda p or things like that uh, in order to solve these problems. Yeah? Is homework nine going to be covered on the chat? Homework nine? Uh, which one is homework nine? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, let, let, let me check, let me check. Because I think I, think I labeled this incorrectly. 
So let, let me check now. But it's going to be everything involving well bores and faults. Okay, so then. So it's going to be homework six. Homework, yeah, homework six, uh, homework seven, homework eight, and homework number nine. So actually, this one, this one is not seven, this one is eight, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, send me an email. Send me an email and then I'll, I'll yeah, just send me an email, tell me where the mistake is and then I'll, I'll check that, okay? Okay, so uh, are we good then with homework number eight? So for the sec second part of question two, you yeah. asked us to look at the Let me check. This one. Yes. So. Fractures. Are those fractures or are those faults? The lines? You mean the maps? Those lines are the directions of maximum principal stress. Oh. Yeah. So. That map is this map, and <coughs> all those lines are mean direction of maximum principal stress. Oh, also okay. Um, the yeah. The cross reference is defined now for over period. Which, which one? So that's why I, if, if you check, took me some time the other day, but if you check the video from the previous lecture, uh, you will see that I used uh, another map because <coughs> maybe hard to me to find, but probably is that one somewhere over there, right? Go, go to another map of North America where you have all the, the states and, and you will find it much more easily, okay? But for example, if I told you later, I don't know, about the place uh, around here, near, uh, this is Illinois, right? Somewhere over there. Well, now you know that all those lines mean direction of maximum principal stress. And if you have some time, please go ahead and read what it says over here in the, in the legends of the, uh, the caption of the map. And there you'll find all the information that that you need in order to understand this map. Yeah. No, no, I never said that. Never said that. This is just direction maximum principal stress. Then, depending on the on the faulting regime, as you can see over here, you're going to have different types of uh, orientations of faults or hydraulic fractures. Okay, so let's go to homework number nine. Uh, homework number nine is just an extension of the of the wellbore stability part, and it's not a lot different. So the problem six nine three. Uh, this is six nine, right? Yes. Let me put this over here. So 
problem 693 is just another example of computing uh, PWBO for a given breakout uh, angle uh, PW shear so it's the same as the one before um, PV but this time I'm asking you to study again what would be the influence of the differential horizontal stress so here we have sigma h max minus sigma h mean and this pw uh, you should see something similar to what you saw for over pressure in which uh, in which your lower bound or your PWBO uh, sigma h max minus sigma h mean increases this one is going to require more and more uh, weight and your PV is going to increase it's going to be uh, very similar to what you saw before and th there is there's actually nothing new in there so that's the only thing that, that you have to do uh, if you plot your three cases over there then you will see something like this and uh, again you know these lines may not necessarily cross but but this, this is the idea that one is going to increase and the other one is going to decrease and there's going to be a point at which maybe uh, your well board cannot be drilled and that's because the differential stress is, is too large. 694 is very similar to the one before, but in this case, I'm asking you to consider a case offshore. And remember for, for the midterm next week, review how to calculate stresses in onshore conditions and offshore conditions because you, you need to know that that's the first step to solve a problem of uh, fault uh, stress on fault or to compute drilling stability that's the initial data that you need um, it's, it's uh, very likely that I'm not going to give you that because I expect that you know how to calculate that and uh, let's see if there is anything new in here um, no there's nothing new here so I'm just going to, to skip it okay the only thing is SV you have to calculate that a little bit differently and the one that it's going to be uh, a bit different now is 695 because with 695 uh, we're going to C and you have to calculate drilling stability for horizontal well bores. And let's see what the problem says so I can help you with that. Uh, okay, this is a gas reservoir and you have two well bores one drilling in the direction of SH mean and one drilling in the direction of SH max. I'm asking you to draw cross sections of those well bores. Uh, similar to what we did uh, in this case so that, that's what I mean with the cross sections for the well bores and I'm asking you, I'm asking you there to identify <coughs> where you will have the expected position of tensile fractures and well bore breakouts I'm not meaning that all the time you're going to have a breakout or a tensor fracture, but if a tensor fracture of a breakout will happen, that will be the place where it will happen. And, and then I'm giving, I'm giving you some data about depth, uh, horizontal stresses, vertical stress gradient, and you need to compute the mechanical stability limits for that well work. Uh, let's see if I'm not giving you a a, a breakout angle here 
so so you you may probably we can agree on a number i don't know in the homework in the homework solution there is already a number mohammed is there a number there for the breakout angle of the last problem number five do you know uh, so let's say let's agree on a number let's say a, a breakout angle of uh, 70 degrees okay so let me get back here uh, for those laterals then we're going to set a, a breakout angle of 70 degrees something I didn't mention but it's also covered here in the notes it's, is that you could either set up a given breakout angle and you can set a breakout angle and then calculate what is the pressure for that angle <coughs> or you could also set a given pressure for example in this case is 10 pounds per gallon and with that pressure calculate what is the angle that you would get it, it's the same equation right but you just have to move it a little bit <coughs> uh, but please go ahead and although it's not in the homework uh, check this problem 6-2 in the notes and it's just a different approach to the to the same problem but uh, for this one for the homework let's adopt solution is 45 okay we'll change it to 45 so where was I here Uh, okay, we'll say 45, and uh, I should write that in the notes too. So please calculate uh, PWO for 45 uh, degrees. And the new thing here is to identify which are the stress that you have to use, right? And I, as I was mentioning, I'm going to have to come back over here again. For that problem, you have to use... the same Kears equations but now you're not going to have sigma h max and sigma h min necessarily you may have here sigma v and sigma h min or you may have uh, sigma v and sigma h max it depends which one is the largest of the two and that particular uh, location but just replace those stresses by the maximum on the plane and the minimum on the plane and the rest is is exactly the same Question. yes so, uh, um, what what well, just just share uh, your thoughts with uh, everyone I, I had a brain fart. okay <laughs> <laughs> okay all right <laughs> so <coughs> and I think that's pretty much it that's everything that's everything that you have to do and uh, and then you have to, s to say you know in which direction you have a wider window and why and uh, and that's it yes Well, no, no, but that's the issue because uh, oh, you, you need the, the solutions. because I need I will have to to post the solution at at twelve o one, and then uh, you will be forced to to you know to see that uh, at night. So it it this is not difficult at all. Okay, it's it's just more of the same. And uh, for the deviated well, it's going to be a little bit different, but that, that's that's the only thing. But the deviated, so it's not going to be on the exam. Yeah, the deviated is going to be on the exam. Deviated well is going to be on the exam. And a few more conceptual things that we're going to talk on uh, on Monday. Uh, but it's going to be everything there. Yeah. Would it be possible to maybe push the lab due date back so that we can really 
Um, let me talk about that with Jeffrey. Yeah, we can do that. But I mean, the idea is that that the lab is also useful for the homework and for the test, right? So, so it's all, all about the same. So that that that's going to help you also okay. study for for the exam. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I can do that. Actually, I, I have finished with that. I'm now working on the next chapter of hydraulic fracturing, so yeah, I can upload that. I'll try to do that today, okay? Yeah. Will you post it in practice? I will post the practice midterms. And uh, can you send me an email to remind me that? Because when I get to my office, I might forget. Um, but if you send me an email, uh, I'll make sure that I try to upload those probably today too. All right? And if you don't have any other questions, I'm gonna give you back all the time I stole from you <laughs> during this time. Is that fine? Yes. All right, okay. See you guys on Monday.